I tend to record like every single project that I do in my studio, and these clips usually never see the light of day, but I'm trying to put together more videos, and in these clips, I'm starting to see little stories emerge. <laughs> This is my studio's main workspace. It's an eight foot table I made about a year ago. The right side is for all the dirty work and the left side's for all the digital work. I painted this inch grid on the table the day I built it, which apparently is the only thing I didn't film that day. Like I literally have footage of myself disassembling the switch box that I use for my lights. Now, when I repainted this grid like an hour ago, I didn't think this clip would ever be used for a video, much less be the subject of one, but I started to see a little story I could tell through this clip. And the story I saw was about this crappy little 8-inch plastic ruler. Ah, oh, found it. It's my favorite ruler. I always keep a ruler on the right hand side of my desk. This isn't like some sort of code that I follow, it's just there always ends up being one there. All the tools I use the most often, they end up right there to the right of my keyboard. And that's where this little eight inch ruler currently lives. This ruler is the one that's usually sitting to the right of my desk. Now, I like using this metal one. It's got character, it's got history. I've been using this ruler for like everything for five years. But this plastic one, I just don't like using. It's bland, it's got no personality. It doesn't feel correct being at that right hand spot on my desk. I'd always just rather use my favorite metal ruler. But I have a big problem with this one. It's that I always end up losing it. I pretty frequently use this metal ruler in four different locations. My studio, my car, the garage, and I travel with it so it ends up in my backpack. It was missing for a couple weeks and the plastic ruler was the current substitute on hand. Now this seems like a pretty simple problem, why don't I just buy four of the same ruler, you know? Well, that's not the problem. I have a lot of rulers, but this one is just the one that I like to use the most. So I can't convince myself to buy a new ruler because there's always a ruler around but I always want this one, you know? So what I need to do is not buy another ruler. I need to befriend another ruler. And that's where we return to the story of the little plastic eight inch. I was almost finished repainting my grid lines, but the giant metal yardstick I was using wouldn't reach to the top to get those last couple horizontal lines. So, regretfully, I reached for the dinky little plastic 8-inch ruler. I don't like using this ruler, not because it's 4 inches shorter and technically worse for this application. It's just because it's not as fun of a tool to use. I just don't have as much of a connection to it. That's why I like to pick up my tools from places like antique stores, thrift stores, or abandoned buildings. The rust and scratches and dents just add to the story of the tool. It's lived another life before it came to me. This old style plumbing wrench I found in an abandoned boiler room. And this flathead I got from a repoed old van. I bought this big old square from a yard sale back in my hometown. They also gave me this filing cabinet that I'm using for all my tools. These tin snips and this hand drill are from my great aunt Dot. She gave them to me recently when she was clearing out things from an old silversmithing class she took in college. Super cool. What I'm realizing is that there's a process to a tool becoming an accepted tool within my studio. Firstly, I gotta just use it. The tool needs a couple little projects under its belt. But more importantly than the history, it needs some visible character. Some scratches, some dings, some cracks, some paint marks, maybe even a little customization. And in using this little plastic ruler for the past couple weeks while my metal one was missing, it's got a few projects under its belt. And today, it started to get some visible character. I guess all it takes is some paint marks and some scratches to get me to start liking a piece of plastic. So I decided to do some customization too. Removing logos is not a practice that I do on all of my tools, but sometimes it feels appropriate. It makes a tool one of one. I can't go to a store and buy another ruler exactly like this anymore. It's mine now. There's something special about doing some irreparable modification to something that you own. This drill is a good example of a tool I have an attachment to. I use it a lot, and it's got its own character and modifications. The back of the handle's painted green on all my Milwaukee 12 volts. 
It's so I don't put these triangle shaped batteries in upside down. It's a minor fix, but I like it. Each different color of spray paint dusted on the surface reminds me of its own project. This drill was a gift from my dad last Christmas. Probably the best gift I've ever been given. At that time I was designing sets and props for a movie my friend John was putting together. I was pre-drilling 2x4s using an old corded drill with a broken clutch that we found in his grandparents' basement. So understandably this gift was huge at that time. And through that movie production, my brand new drill got to get its first few marks of character. Most of my tools have some sort of story. And now the little 8 inch ruler has a bit of story too. And even though I found my metal ruler, I think this little guy might keep hanging out on my desk for a bit. It's gone through the rite of passage for all my frequently used tools. A bit of abuse and a bit of love. All that you had in